you that um, if you're going to have a birthday anytime soon, you should try to do it on like a week when your favorite basketball team wins a national championship. And just in general, that's a good time to have a birthday. This is a happy one for me. Um, I hope you all got to see that, that game on Monday. It was really, uh, it was really exciting. Um, let's see now got this going here. We have four different programs in the classics department that we, um, we can, that you can major or minor in. So the first, our traditional major is the classics major. And this is one where you study Greek or Latin or both, actually. You have to study both when you take a classics major. Um, and you read the literature and the, uh, you study the history of these two great civilizations. And we also offer a major in Latin only or in Greek only. So if you're interested in, let's say, uh, reading the New Testament, or you're interested in having maybe a religion double major, uh, often our students will pair Greek with religion or something like that. Um, or maybe you just have a lot of Latin and you want to keep going with just the Latin, you can do that too. So we're the only university in the state of Texas that allows you to do a Greek or Latin major individually. We also have a new program called the Greek and Roman Studies major, which is uh, the study of all of these things, the literature, the philosophy, the art and architecture, the history uh, of the ancient world. But we don't require the Latin or Greek knowledge for this major. It's a new major. We're excited about it. You can read things in translation. And if you're just ready to jump into some of these things uh, without spending the, the time doing the language study, or if you haven't ever done language study before, and you're kind of worried about the language study, uh, this is a great option. Although, even if you are worried about studying Latin or Greek at any point, uh, you don't need to be. They're, they're, they're challenging, I'll admit it, but they're also fun and interesting. And we have a great set of faculty members who are happy to, to lead you through those studies. We also have a new joint five-year program that allows you to get not only your undergraduate degree, your, your bachelor's degree, your BA, but also a master's degree in five years. So you start your freshman year, and instead of finishing in four years and graduating from college, you can study for five years and graduate not only with your degree, but with your master's degree. And when I went to college, I did graduate in five years, and I did not have a master's degree at the end of it. It just took me five years to get through it. Um, but, uh, but we have a, a good system set up where you wouldn't, do, you wouldn't need five years to get through your BA, but you could have a master's in classes by the time you're done. Classics is an interdisciplinary field by nature. So if you've got a lot of interests, uh, classics is a good way to explore them. So we do offer the Greek language, which is uh, not only the New Testament, but in ancient Greek, you can read the New Testament in its original language. You can also read things like Homer, the Odyssey and the Iliad in Greek, which are life-changing. I know that almost sounds like it's an overstatement, like surely that's not true but it is true. Uh, they are, uh, they, to read Homer in, in the original Greek makes you think about the world in a whole new way. Or reading the philosophy of someone like Plato or Aristotle in Greek is also a great thing you can do with the Greek. Uh, and we offer, of course, Latin where we read Virgil or Cicero. Cicero who, I, I mean, I don't want to oversell Cicero, but he's probably the single most important human being who's ever lived, maybe with the exception of Jesus. I'll, okay, I'll give you Jesus, but then Cicero is like number two. Uh, he's that important. And then probably Scott Drew. I think that's the one, two, three. I, I'm not sure exactly, but I'm pretty sure that's where the rankings go. Um, we offer lots of history. We have some historians within our department. So we offer uh, Roman history classes and Greek history classes. Um, we have uh, Dr. Jones, who is the chair of our department, is an historian, and he talks a lot about um, uh, the sort of the way these things have developed throughout history and the way that the classical tradition can remain important uh, even in the modern world. He also teaches a class on the foundations of democracy. So many of the things that we experience in our lives day to day uh, have their roots in the ancient world. And so uh, Ethics and philosophy of the Greeks and Romans is, is my specialty. And so I like to think about uh, how they thought about what was right and what was wrong in the world. And sometimes we don't agree with those things and that's good. We shouldn't agree with all the things they think, um, but they can help us to understand the way that we consider and think about the, the questions we face day to day. Um, we, uh, we have so many new challenges in our world today with technology, um, with uh, the political structure of the world, and of course with uh, pandemics that pop up now, apparently. And in the case of these things, sometimes we can find that the way to understand them 
uh, has already been explored. Even though they're new things, uh, people have thought about things very, very like them in the past. And we can, we can figure that out by uh, engaging with the ancient world. We also have classes on race in antiquity and women and gender in, in antiquity. Um, the, uh, the ancient world was a, a, a diverse place in many ways. Um, and it's interesting to think of that sometimes because I think we don't always think of it that way. And uh, there are contributions made from all different kinds of people in antiquity. And it's important that we consider those uh, and, uh, and, and, and weigh all of those things together. And so we have those classes, which are, are, are good, interesting classes. We have a large department, actually one of the largest in the uh, entire country. And we teach more people Latin and Greek than almost any university in the entire country. Uh, just here in Waco, Texas, in the banks of the Brazos, we have a great set of faculty members. Here you see them. Dr. Jones is up there in the corner uh, looking very distinguished with his salt and pepper hair there. And uh, Dr. Deluzio next to him is our graduate program director who runs our graduate program. And, uh, but we also have two master teachers on faculty. So at Baylor, there's a specific designation you can get called master teacher. And there are not many of them on campus, maybe a dozen, 15, and two of them are in our department, Dr. Smith and Professor Tommy Lou Davis who are on the, on the right um, of the screen, the bottom two uh, rows there. But all of our uh, professors are eager to work with students. We prioritize the chance to get to talk about these things that we love uh, with our students. And again, we're, we know, all of us know all of our students and all of our students know all of us. That's the kind of community we have within our department. We also have, I'm gonna go back real quickly, Dr. Fish, who uh, is uh, underneath Dr. Jones over here. We have in our department, a professor named Jeff Fish and one named Jeff Hunt. It's kind of strange, isn't it? Like hunting and fishing and they're both named Jeff. Anyway, if you're an outdoors person, you're, you're all set. But Dr. Fish is a papyrologist. He's, uh, he studies the ancient uh, papyri from the ancient world and it's really cool. Um, he's a person you definitely want to get to know. Super friendly guy. Um, and uh, you can work with him to study uh, the papyri and sort of try to piece together some of these things, uh, some of these things that were said um, that we don't know about and we we're trying to learn about what was being said 2000 years ago. Um, we have uh, faculty who work on history, who work on religion, who work on poetry, work on philosophy, and you're welcome to work with any uh, person in our department. We're all eager to engage our students in this research because there are new things to discover all the time, and we don't want to just do it in the closet alone. It's fun for us to be able to work with our students, and so our students often write honors theses. I saw someone in the uh, in the Q and A had asked about the honors college, and I'll get to those questions in a minute. But uh, lots of our students are in the honors college, uh, and so are writing honors theses and doing other research projects, presenting at conferences. Uh, we had a student, in fact, I've got one of my students who's presenting today at a virtual conference, a national conference um, for professionals in the field. She's an undergraduate, but she's presenting her paper, maybe even as we speak at that conference. And so there are lots of chances to work with faculty if research is your interest. And then one of my favorite parts of the whole department is our study abroad program. Every summer, we go to Italy. My wife and I lead this program and she is a professor in the English department. And if you get a chance to take her at Baylor, you should because she's like really attractive, but that's not why you should take her. You should take her because she's like also a great English professor. And if you, if you met her and took her class, you would love English, even if you didn't want to. You would come out of the class just totally loving it. And so she and I both teach in this program and our kids come along for it. And I don't know if you guys have ever been to Italy. I hope you have, uh, and you can come back again on Baylor in Italy. And if you haven't, uh, then we'd love to take you. Um, we go all over Italy and we see, you know, the beautiful things you can see and eat the beautiful things you can eat and encounter the beautiful people. All the Italians are beautiful. And you can just look at them and say, wow, why do I look the way I look when I could look like an Italian? I guess I can't look like that, but it's, uh, it's just fascinating to be there. The culture, we immerse ourselves in the culture. You don't have to speak Italian to go on this trip, uh, but we do study the ancient monuments and art and architecture and topography of, of the ancient world as part of this program. We actually did not go uh, last summer and we're not going this summer. Um, I made posters and everything, 
those trips didn't happen, I think you can probably guess why. So the pandemic has just limited that. But uh, 2022, man, I'm itching to get back and uh, would love to take some of you guys along if you happen to be at Baylor uh, at that time. Okay, uh, that's all I, have. I will mention real quickly that we do also have scholarship uh, opportunities within our program. Um, some of those scholarship opportunities can uh, help you get to Italy if that's what you wanna do. Um, and um, it's, we do have uh, scholarships directly through the classics department for people who major in our department or people who, if, you, if you've heard of the university scholars program, some students take uh, that program and maybe do a secondary major in classics or work with classics. And if you have a concentration in classics, you'll also be eligible for some of our uh, scholarship uh, opportunities. So I'm going to stop there with, uh, with my spiel, and I'm going to look at some of these questions and answer some of them. If you have more questions, please feel free to go ahead and, and uh, address those uh, to me there in the Q&A, and uh, we can talk through those things too. It looks like the first uh, question here from Katie says, can you still do the honors college programs if you were doing the five-year BA MA classics option? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, now the the BIC and the university scholars uh, programs easily integrate, uh, and the honors program easily integrate with classics. And, oh, sorry, it's Peyton and not Katie. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, but yes, you can easily um, uh, take these programs with, um, with the classics uh, major. And many of our students do this, so we're happy to integrate those programs. University Scholars is an independent major. And so you would have in that situation, you would have to take a secondary major in classics in addition to the University Scholars major, which again, many people do, um, easy to fit in, uh, in order to do the five-year program. But, uh, but yes, we, we love to work with the Honors College. In fact, the director of University Scholars, uh, Jeff Hunt, is, is on our faculty. And then um, Jillian says, is there a specific prof I should contact about transferring dual enrolled credits? Um, most, most of the transfer credits that you have, uh, Jillian, can, uh, will be sort of filtered through the, 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 the Baylor administration. Um, but I am, the, as the undergraduate program director, I'm happy to talk to you about any specific classics credits and how those might transfer in. Uh, ultimately, all the classics credits that are transferred, I will approve. Uh, myself. And so, yeah, happy to talk about that. Um, you can email me um, if you want to about that. Um, my, my email address, it may even be at the bottom of one of these posters. I don't know, but it is uh, Dan underscore Hanchy, D-A-N underscore H-A-N-C-H-E-Y at Baylor.edu. And uh, I'm glad to talk about that. Okay, let's see. Robert here says, joined late. Oh, uh, when I learned that the classics meeting knows about Koine Greek. Yes, you can absolutely. Oh yeah, with an engineering major. Uh, yes, absolutely. We'd love to have you minor in, in, in Greek. And uh, the we don't offer just Koine Greek. The thing about Greek is that when you learn ancient Greek, um, if you know ancient Greek, the, we teach usually the Attic dialect. If you know that, you can read Koine. You can't always go the other way around. But basically the first year is just learning the language. And then in our third semester, we start reading the Greek. And there you do start reading New Testament in the third semester. And uh, we would make sure you had plenty of opportunities to read all the Koine that you wanted to read. Elia asks uh, how big our department is and it is, uh, it's, it's pretty big. So you saw that we have 15 faculty members and um, we teach hundreds of students in Latin every semester. There are always multiple sections of our intro level classes, you know, the language classes. We offer lots of mythology classes. Um, so uh, I did my graduate work at the University of Texas and we have a bigger department than the University of Texas, uh, which is saying something because the University of Texas has a lot of people, <laughs> as you may know, there are a lot of people there. Um, but yeah, biggest in Texas for sure one of the biggest in the entire country. Uh, it's hard to judge these things exactly, but like over the last 10 years, we've fluctuated between being the biggest and one among the biggest uh, graduate, undergraduate program in classics. You can absolutely know, you can absolutely minor in classics, you can minor in Greek, you can minor in Latin, and you can minor in our Greek and Roman studies program, which doesn't require the languages. So yes, you can 
definitely minor and we would welcome you doing that. That's an 18 hour program as a general rule, you do uh, just 18 hours to get the minor. And uh, that can happen pretty fast and you can take care of that pretty fast, especially if you come to Italy and get some summer classes and we'll definitely make sure you got that minor. Uh, Liam says about the AP Latin course, where would you enter? And that all, that really depends on, um, well, the way we do it in our, we don't offer specific AP credit for the class. Uh, what, what we do instead is conduct an interview, a placement interview. So you would do that interview either with Dr. Jones or with me. And the, our goal is to put you in the class that challenges you, but also makes you feel comfortable. So uh, some of our students come in and they jump right into upper level classes and they start reading with our juniors and seniors. Um, we had in my upper level Cicero in the fall, I had three freshmen in there who had taken a lot of Latin, including the AP test. Uh, many of our freshman students who have taken the AP test start in our intermediate level. And some of them say, you know what? I took it, but I didn't feel great about it. And really don't remember a lot of things. Like I'm not really sure what an ablative is. And in that case, they just start right back over. So, but what we, we don't want to, you know, overwhelm you. And we also don't want you to feel bored. So that's why we do the interviews so that we can have a personal conversation and say, hey, here's what we think makes sense. And let's see, um, if we major in classics, we will learn Latin. Should we start learning it in high school or wait till we go to college? That's a great, great question. Um, and it's, really up to you if you need a language in high school um, and Latin is available to you. You know, I always recommend that, especially because you often build good relationships studying Latin uh, with the people who are studying it with you. Um, we do, you know, we try to lay a really good foundation at Baylor in our languages. We, we take pride in how good our students are at the languages. So you don't have to learn before you come here because we want we like to build from the ground up and make sure that you feel really good and that you're building semester by semester on what we're trying to teach. And, uh, and so, but we have students who thrive both ways. So I know that doesn't necessarily answer your question entirely. If you felt like dabbling in some French or something in high school, that's great too. Uh, or Italian, you know, that would help you if you went to Italy. Most high schools don't offer Italian. But, um, but if you do have some Latin, yeah, we definitely welcome that. and We'll build off of that. Let's see, Jack says, uh, also interested in archaeology, any relevant opportunities? And, and, and yes, there absolutely are. Um, our Baylor in Italy program has one sort of traditional class kind of uh, program. And then there's also an archaeological program with a dig, an active dig um, right near Viterbo uh, in, in central Italy in the uh, Lazio province. And uh, David Zori, who teaches in the BIC, runs that program. He is an archaeologist but he is, we have a very close relationship with him and we would be excited for you. We have students all the time who are interested in archeology span and study with him, but also take classes with us, uh, especially if you're interested in classical archeology, span you can pair those two together really, really well. And uh, really it's, it's kind of a rare opportunity for undergraduates to get to participate in an archeological dig in Italy. Um, but Dr. Zori does that every summer, same time as, as my wife and I are in Italy. and. Uh, and so, yeah, absolutely, that works well. And as far as placement tests for Greek go, and I'm not that I know of, there are none that, I mean, again, like with the Latin, we don't use a test to place people in Greek, but if you've had Greek, again, we'll have a conversation and say, here's where we think it's gonna work perfectly for you. And, and we want your input on that too. We want you to say, I feel great, uh, you know, about the optative mood. I don't wanna take, any more Greek grammar because I feel good. Me verbs, no problem. Uh, let me jump into third semester and say, go for it. But if you say, you know, yikes, me verbs, I'm not so sure about, but datives, I feel great about. And we say, okay, well, maybe second semester is the right one for you. So again, we do that personally uh, through conversations. And Jax, you say, it's in taking Latin one and two this summer through Accelerate. Uh, that's great, wonderful. This, uh, the Accelerate programs are online programs. And Dr. Smith in our department, who is one of our master teachers, is teaching those courses this summer. And of course, taking a language online can be challenging. I think it's one of the more challenging types of classes to take through an online format. But Dr. Smith is really great and personable, and he's friendly. And uh, so if, that, if that's something you're interested in, I'd say absolutely go for it. Um, 
get to know him if you can. He's hilarious. And I know an online environment makes things a little bit more challenging, uh, but absolutely, if that's, uh, if that's one of our offerings this summer, and I would say, yeah, absolutely, go for it. And uh, he will be someone who will respond to your needs uh, throughout the summer. And um, I think that is the end of our questions there. Um, anybody else have a last question before we wrap up? If not, again, thanks so much for participating here. And again, I, please feel free to email me at any time. And I hope I get to meet each and every one of you um, uh, in the coming months and years. Thanks again. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Hanchi. That was great. And thank you guys for participating, asking questions, and attending this session. So I go, hope you guys have a great rest of your day and sick of bears. All right. <laughs>